Uh, good afternoon. You will have seen the <coughs> headline figures for uh, the health budget, so $4.7 billion um, uh, additional uh, spend. Um, that is a 45% increase in the next financial year compared to the 2017 financial year. Uh, $2.7 billion over four, over four years is just for district health boards uh, to meet their additional costs. $200 million over four years for Pharmac. Um, that fulfils a manifesto promise that Labor made in last year's election. Um, and there's the funding for the transition for the health reforms, both the establishment of Health NZ and the Māori Health Authority. There is one item that was announced uh, last year for funding, which was the um, uh, annual uh, doctor's visits and eye checks for senior citizens. Um, that program will not proceed. Um, that was costed at $197 million over four years. Um, that is a program that won't proceed. Um, happy to take any questions if they'll. What does it cost what, half a billion dollars to bring in those reforms? That's a lot of money you've set aside. What, what has it been spent on? That's over four years. That's to establish the organisations, um, to establish uh, the, um, uh, the various processes, also to engage with uh, the health sector and, um, and the new processes and governance arrangements that will have to be put in place for them to function. Is it going to take you four years to abolish all the DHBs? Uh, no, the DSBs uh, will go out of existence in one July next year, um, but the, uh, the new organisations, the regional bodies, um, the locality, uh, more localised bodies will have to be established, um, as will the, uh, the governance arrangements, not just the, the governing boards of Health NZ and the Māori Health Authority and the regional divisions of Health NZ, but also um, for different functions, uh, I am expecting that there will be external uh, governance arrangements set up um, for particular functions. So that, that money will just that money that's scheduled for four years for DHBs gets soaked up by the new system. Does it? Does, what's, this might be thinking too far ahead, but the, the DHB deficits is that, is that is that sort of calculated in here at all? Um, no, that's that's not an issue that um, that we've dealt with in this budget. So yeah, the the, the money that is um, allocated over the next four years for the district health boards, when they go out of existence, it will be absorbed into. Uh, the operational funding that Health NZ will be responsible for, but it'll be um, as Health NZ has migrated to it, the functions, the assets and the liabilities and, and the operations of the district health boards um, uh, it will take account of the additional funding in this year's budget. Why do you have money for mental health? Uh, well, mental health had a significant boost in funding, the $1.9 billion uh, programme in the 2019 budget that included year-on-year um, additional ring-fenced funding, funding for existing services, plus the growth of new services. That program continues um, for the next two to three years. Do you want Farming. more money for farming? Sorry? Did you want more money for farming? Uh, the, the manifesto commitment was uh, $200 million over four years. We've got $200 million over four years. Do you want more money for farming? Uh, I wanted us to fulfil our manifesto commitment, and we've done that. Um, in terms of your manifesto commitment, the, 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 the scheduling of the money is a wee bit different to in the manifesto. I think it's 50 in the manifesto in the yep. first year, 40, and this obviously it does add up to 200 million. Yep. Why is the scheduling a wee bit different? Um, it's, it's just the way it, it works out. So it's $40 million this year, 45 for the next, 55 after that, and 60. It means that the, the final year of the forecast period is higher than what was um, in the manifesto. So there's swings and roundabouts. People can pay. Oh, sorry, you used to that. Yeah, if I can just one, one. Does that mean that when you, in the next year, when, the, when you get the, the, the first smaller top up, does that mean that fewer medicines will be funded then as will be funded uh, at the end of that forecast period? Wouldn't it be better to dollop it evenly so that all of the medicines that that money could be funded, could be used to fund, would be funded right from the get go? Mm, except that the funding increases year on year in each of those four years. So I don't know why you would think there would be medicines that would be unfunded. Sorry, you'll have to run that past me again. I'm not... $40 million would buy fewer medicines than $60 million would. So wouldn't it make some more sense to make it $50, 50 million across the whole period so you could buy $50 million, all of the medicines in the first year that the increased funding applies? Um, well, you're getting increased funding, so the expectation would be that you would be able to purchase um, more medicines in, in each of those years. I, I, I'm not quite sure that anybody's worse off as a result. Sorry, there was a question here. The people campaigning for more farm funding who were here last week I would say they're devastated by the $200 million. 
and they say that people are going to die as a result of that funding not going up. What, what would you say to them? First of all, I don't buy into extremist rhetoric. Secondly, under this government, Pharmac funding has increased now 25%. Compare that to the last three years of the last government, where it increased less than 7% over that three-year period. Um, the budget is now over $1 billion, in fact, over $1.1 billion. To the extent there was a call to double it, uh, when you have a budget of over $1 billion, uh, you don't double that in a single year. Do you think that that is enough to get all the drugs that are needed by people in New Zealand for the various conditions? Uh, look, it is always challenging with Pharmac, but we have uh, significant, significantly increased Pharmac's budget um, in the time that we have been in government because we do want to see more medicines funded. We know that Pharmac has a challenge with um, uh, ensuring that you know, new, new technologies and new medicines that come online are available to New Zealand. We have a number of reviews going on, uh, the review about Pharmac and its decision making. We also have the work being done by the Cancer Control Agency. Uh, which includes looking at uh, treatments that are funded by Pharmac and comparing treatments available in New Zealand compared to overseas countries. I'm confident with all of that work, we will over time make sure that we have uh, a regime that is, uh, you know, that, that is fit for New Zealand and the demands by New Zealand patients on our Pharmac budget. Just on the market, House Authority, you know, they 127 million for the programs. Mm. Are you sort of anticipating that'll be up and running and spending? quite quickly. Like what time frame would, do you think it will be up in, in commissioning steps? Well, we want the, we want the interim uh, Māori Health Authority in place you know, in, the, in a matter of months. Uh, so there will be an interim uh, governing board and uh, interim arrangements put in place. Um, and we want the, in the interim board, uh, as it's doing its work, is to start thinking about innovative ways of um, health services for Māori. And then uh, once it is in place, uh, the permanent arrangements are in place from 1 July next year. It, it'll have a budget over uh, the next um, uh, four years to, to continue that search for innovative practices and innovative services. I think, as um, Penny Hennardi said, uh, obviously once the Māori Health Authority is in place and we get a better picture of what the demand is and therefore what a more suitable long-term funding stream is for the Māori Health Authority, standing alongside Health New Zealand, um, uh, that, that picture will change. What do you say to critics who say that the overhaul of the DHB system, uh, the money used on that would have been better spent on Pharmac? Um, we have a system that simply is not serving New Zealand's health needs at all well. We have to make a change to the system. Everybody I have spoken to in the system, and I have done uh, an extensive range of stakeholder engagement in the last few months, everybody says it has to change, it has to change now, and it has to change quickly. There is a price attached to change. It does cost to make change. The long-term investment is we have a health system that is better designed to meet the needs of all New Zealanders. All right, thank you.